Hi, I'm Ron Jones, a personal trainer, now turned content creator and influencer of sorts. I want to explain something about myself in a much longer format. I'm usually on platforms like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, whereby I have to give an abridged version of who I am. 59 seconds, I'm going to lose the viewer's attention. Well, now I feel like I'm safe to actually talk. I, I for one, don't like training on camera with my shirt off. I'll explain to you why. I love health and wellness. I love what it has done for me. I love what it has done for others. And I never want to become a distraction from the message I'm trying to convey, that I'm trying to teach. In fact, I consider myself a teacher of sorts, a professor, not in the sense of like a college educated professor who's trying to teach you about mathematics or, or in a classroom setting, uh, but more so because I love this discipline. And like anyone, perhaps even yourself, when you love something, you, you study it and you study it to the degree of wanting to profess it to the world, literally as a professor. And that's how I feel about health and wellness. When I'm training on camera with my clothes off or exposing my skin too much, I feel like you're more so watching me than the message I'm trying to give to you. So I'm commonly using demonstration style weight, something that's far from my actual strength levels, not wanting to distract from the message at hand. My, my career beginnings are very humble um, as a personal trainer, but beyond that, as an actual bodybuilder. When I was 18 years old, I found the gym by way of a friend of mine named, named Matt Nelson. And Matt showed me how I could work out to gain muscles. Um, I had no idea of this concept. All I knew was playing sports and I happened to look a certain way. But with the intentional um, movements, um, intentional design of strength training, cardio, and recovery, which is your eating and sleeping, you could fashion the body that you wanted. From there, I went into digging into magazines. And in these magazines, I found a whole nother world. This is before we had the easy access internet. So magazines were my friends. Those are my colleagues. That's how I saw Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler, Flex Wheeler. I was able to see these mountainous men who I did not know before I came into bodybuilding. But when you saw these guys in the street, if you happened to see one of these guys in the street, you knew this guy was special. He was creating his own celebrity. At that point, I didn't know how I would be famous, if I could ever be famous, but I did know I could walk around and you have to notice me. Um, I wasn't attention seeking the whole time, but I knew that I wanted to show the world that I am different. I am special. And I knew that if I could make that physique happen that way, it would work. I initially used that to get girls. That was my first my first reason for coming into the gym. I decided I wanted to go into the gym, uh, build muscle because the following spring break, chicks would notice it and I get the attention, the adoration. I had put attention before then, but I figured if I had muscles on top of it all, oh man, I'll be the man. So I dove in and it worked. It worked. I'd be doggone if it worked. I'm um, fast forwarding through my school career. Um, I got to a point where I was working in GNC. It was a nutritional supplement store. It is a nutritional supplement store in a mall. Again, this is before the readily accessible internet age. So there wasn't a global commerce of supplements available to everyone at their fingertips. So you had to come into the actual GNC building itself, um, store itself in the mall to purchase these supplements. Um, we well, might've had one company called bodybuilding.com that was sending things out via mail. Anyways, you came into brick and mortar store and there I was all too happy to tell you about your new lifestyle and what might help you reach those goals. Um, I was pushing creatine. I was pushing pre-workouts. It was a very limited lineup because it wasn't a very popular thing at that point in time, health and wellness, but I was still nonetheless professing and telling the world about um, how supplements could help you reach those goals. But beyond giving you just a supplement, I knew I had to tell you about what else came with that one, which is how to strength train, how you should perhaps be doing cardio, because you're in front of me. So I can actually tell you what I would do more so to enhance your physique or get you to those goals. Um, so I was giving you so much more than simply the transaction of supplements for, for, um, for the money you gave. I was giving you a journey. Um, after a while, I had repeat customers coming in for more information. That's when I found myself considering the idea of being a personal trainer, which is very interesting because at this point in time, this has got to be circa 2000, 
four, five, six, somewhere in there. Um, personal trainers are reserved to the rich um, or the Hollywood celebs. Personal trainers were not something available to the everyday person, or at least I thought, um, until a few. And I perhaps, I guess they perhaps were well off enough to afford me. Um, I wasn't charging much at that point in time, but they actually asked me, you know, when you graduate your college, um, at college, would you consider being my personal trainer? And I had amassed a pretty decent sized listing of those who wanted me to train them. I had at least probably five clients upon graduation, which isn't a lot, but at 25 a session, um, that's 25 bucks an hour. Consider that, um, you training with me three times a week, every month, you're paying 12 sessions at a time. That's about 30, about three, about 300 bucks a month from one client, one client times five. That's uh, quick math, um, 1500 bucks a month off of just personal training. I forget it was pretty good. <laughs> I'm coming fresh out of school. Keep in mind, the economy was different back then. Back to my point. I loved it. Um, I started off with my first few clients. They were homemakers. Um, and these homemakers didn't know why, but they felt better after they came and saw me. Not that I was doing something special for them that was never before seen or heard of, but I was packaging this lifestyle of cardio, strength training, and recovery and making it more palatable for them. I did not know to what depth I was making an impact until they began to tell me um, what areas of their world were being improved. Um, side story for you. One of the husbands of one of these homemakers, these ladies at this community I was training in, came in one day and he said to me, man, Ron, I gotta tell you, I appreciate you a ton, he said. I appreciate you for what you're doing to, for, uh, for my wife. And I said, no problem, bro, I got you, good to go. But he kept insisting, he kept saying, man, I don't think you understand, Ron, to what degree you are helping and changing, improving our life. Our marriage is made so much better. I'm getting a little nervous now. Who's this rich guy trying to tell me about why his wife is doing so much better now that she is with me? You know, what's your angle? What are you after right now? Um, so I'm still leery as I listen to him. And then he goes on to tell me that uh, when he comes home from, from work, um, he had a tendency to, to leave his, his work boots. Uh, he was actually a pilot, uh, which was pretty well paid, um, Air Force pilot. But he would happen to leave his work boots near the garden tub and his wife would just go over the top, mad, infuriated that he kept leaving these boots by the garden tub. But he said she doesn't care anymore now. And I'm thinking to myself, keep in mind, I'm young Ron, so I'm probably 23, 24 years old. I'm thinking to myself, what a guard, what do boots have to do with a fight at home? And then it, the aha moment came, the light bulb went off. What was going on here? She was no longer pent up with frustration and energy. Um, and he was no longer the target of that when he came home. She had been making this home um, for, for, for the good part of her day, cleaning up, and he would come home and disrespectfully leave his work boots there. Um, because she didn't have much else going on, not to diminish the workload of a homemaker, but because she didn't have much going on, that was tremendous to her. And it signified he did not care um, in her mind. This was all conjured because, well, she doesn't have a rank order of priorities in her life. So she definitely ranked those boots as being pretty high on the list. But now that she was working out with me, exerting herself, she just felt overall better. Um, so then it started to really hit me on what impact I was having on others. I went on to training more teens at that point in time. And the teens uh, really hit me in a special place because these teenagers were in a transitional point of their life, going from the prepubescent points of their life. We're talking 11, 12, finally coming into 13, 14. And with that age, physiologically comes sex hormones. Um, so now they find themselves just unsure of so much, um, unsure of so much, unsure about their friends, unsure about their relationships with their parents, unsure about the relationship with themselves, all the while um, trying to find identity. Um, speaking about identity, there was one teenager who really hit me in a special way because she, Abercrombie and Fitch, were the real popular genes at that point in time. I don't know if they still are now with the teenagers, but um, Abercrombie and Fitch were the genes that she wanted to wear, but she couldn't wear them. She was a soccer player and she loved playing soccer, but she could not fit into these Abercrombie and Fitch genes. And was coming to me because of her parents signing her up because she really wanted to be able to slim down some. 
And I'm watching this athletic 14, 15 year old girl feeling disparaged about her body. And that troubled me to no end. The fact that you have someone who's great at her sport, um, the outward reflection of who she was was showing that she was in complete control of her health, um, an elite athlete. I think she was actually probably one of the youngest varsity players on her high school soccer team, but she was all too, she was hurt. She was hurt um, and feeling all too bad about herself because she couldn't fit some jeans that weren't designed for her. I told her these jeans weren't designed for you. They weren't designed for the athlete in mind. Um, I gave her a new identity. I told her that you are an athlete like me and we have our own set of clothes that we wear. We don't have to fit the stitchings of a model made to fit on a runway or not to knock that appearance, but we're not gonna look that way as athletes. We're okay to have fuller thighs. Again, this is before um, health and wellness was extremely popular as it is now. So having full thighs wasn't embraced back then. Um, but she was now embracing the idea that her athletically capable thighs that could not fit into those Abercrombie and fit jeans were okay because those athletically capable and fit thighs was why she could score so many goals, accelerate so fast. So our training at that point in time shifted. It was no longer us trying to drop her total size, but more so enhance her ability to do what she loved, which was be an elite athlete. That identity that was given to her meant so much to me. She could have easily perhaps not have come into this health and wellness space by way of me, I consider myself to be an usher to this, to this space, someone who ushers you into this, into this world of health and wellness. But if I had not been there to meet her and properly welcome her in, she could have found identity somewhere else in the streets, perhaps in the arms of an older kid at school, a boy of some sort. Now she's perhaps doing unscrupulous things to fit in and find belonging. And that hit me special. Um, that hit me special. Um, I guess a big part of what I learned um, training in person was, well, there's so much that I did learn, but one of the advantages to that position was I was living vicariously through so many. I was experiencing so much of life that I had not experienced myself, but I was able to experience it vis-a-vis -vis the client I was dealing with. And you got to figure in a setting of training with me three to four times a week for months and years on end, we become very intimate friends. Um, I'm, I'm experiencing your life through the ups and the downs, through through parents um, 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 dying or or through tragedy or, or or through the significant joys of your life. So much of your life I was there for. So it was very interesting um, to live vicariously through so many, but it was all under the guise, under the cloak of the mutual belief that health the ones was going to improve your life. Um, even now I find myself wanting to help that community more, those who are not um, familiar with the health and wellness world, um, those who who weren't natural athletes um, or they did not embrace the gym or wellness lifestyle after their their teenage years. As they became adults, they stopped doing those things. Um, I like that community more, to tell you the honest truth, because that community is not necessarily easy to please, but they have a better in my opinion, better measurement for what health and wellness is doing for them. Um, having had lost your health or having had not experienced the value of having elite health, when you do get it, oh, you know it because there was a point in time where you didn't have it, right? Um, so not to say that I don't like the idea of goal chasing for an already elite athlete to reach the next level or for a super fit chick to look better in her bathing suit, that's fine and those are her goals. But it doesn't really hit me dual fold, triple fold as it does to give self-esteem to a teenage girl or, or, or to give um, um, purpose or to help reestablish identity for a stay-at-home mother or, or father. Um, things deepened as time went on. Um, I was notorious for retaining clients. I retained clients for quite some time. Um, we're talking clients with me eight, nine, ten years. Um, it wasn't until COVID hit that many of those relationships were interrupted and I entered into the online space, which is a very interesting thing for me because the online space, I was now trying to communicate the value of what health and wellness was or had 
to millions. Um, and I could do that in an intimate setting, but now I wasn't dealing with someone intimately. It was a one way relationship. It was just me talking to a cold lens. And then that lens would be translated by a videographer editor. And then we put it up onto a social network. All the while, I'm not getting real time feedback. Sure, there is a comment section, but as many of you know, most viewers don't even touch the comment section. Kind of like most people who go to a restaurant, they don't actually leave reviews. Um, so I was, I was really thrown when I first came to the internet. I was giving out what I thought was million dollar information that could benefit the world, but I wasn't getting the feedback on, on how it was impacting others. So I believe that's why I implemented the Ron Jones training experience, the basis of my company, um, which was me training clients still. I was doing it on the, on the internet. Now what it did for me at this point was because I was no longer in the gym, I was able to actually talk to, or I am able to actually talk to clients real time. Um, once I structured the program for you, you're gonna be following the video guided training and following along with the dedicated, excuse me, the delegated cardio, as well as the meal plan I had given you. But beyond that, the constant contact of information or uh, of conversation, you could schedule calls and speak with me, you can DM me, but it keeps me connected to real people. Um, the reason I'm doing this, the reason why I believe God has me in this space, I do believe God has me here on purpose, is because I am a, a, a servant to those, um, to his people. Um, God's people are anyone walking God's green earth. Um, so you are, you are definitely his people if you are on this earth. So I am here to deliver this or profess this to all of his people. Um, and the platform lets me reach, reach millions. Um, where I was going with that was the fact that um, I'm happy in that space, able to actually talk to and give information to to so many to so many people. But having a program now allows me to interact and talk to them now personally, back and forth, because some of the hurdles that will present themselves, you aren't prepared to handle. But because I have lived vicariously through hundreds at this point in my career, it's pretty much nothing to me. That menopausal woman is experiencing menopause for the first time. I had gone through menopause teens of times visa um, or vicariously through my through my clientele of of um, of the years I've been doing this. So you're not alone going through this. I have some tips. I have some uh, some things to implement in your life to mitigate those those uh, those menopausal symptoms or, or issues that you're trying to deal with, trying to to become pregnant. Um, um, you feel alone in doing so. I have successfully carried many babies to full gestation. Of course, not through my own womb, I don't have one, but vicariously through the women who I have trained or the men who have been trying to have or conceive children with their wives. I'm not sure I um, so I believe this is why I'm so, so thankful to be in this space and being able to reach so many in, this, in these platforms. Um, the reason I'm here on YouTube, though, is because I'm having to deliver this information in such small clips. I don't think I was able to give the full depth of who I am and what actually moves me. I am indeed a bodybuilder. You all can see that by my physical presence, my oversized biceps, my oversized chest and back. But uh, that's just my personal hobby. And I don't push my personal hobby, although I do learn much from my personal hobby. My true profession is a trainer. Um, my true calling is a personal trainer. I don't care what badges or additional hats I may wear. I'm ultimately here as a servant to the people. This is also why my content I intentionally make so palatable to everyone. If I were to start using profanity or, 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 or blatant sexual innuendo or have even music in the background of my videos that had heavy curse words, I would limit my my scope of reach because everyone doesn't want to hear profanity or curse words so who am i to be given a message to deliver to the people but do so in a way that they must suffer through my constant explicit ex, ex, expo, explicative explicitives <laughs> explicitives explicit <laughs> curse words um who am i to 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 make you have to listen to curse words to get the message about why cardio is important um, it is okay for something to do. I personally have a, a different charge. Um, going down that same vein though, this is sometimes a disheartening part 
of this uh, of this field, um, the hat of being a content creator. I'll explain that part here. As a content creator, I have to captivate the audience. And in captivating the audience, it's not always an easily done thing. The attention span of the world, specifically America, isn't that long. So for me to open up a video and keep your attention in the first five, 10 seconds, 13 seconds can be difficult. Um, it can be difficult. And to, and to do that, many, many creators, influencers, do some what I would consider kind of cheesy things to do so. Um, a lady may have her butt front and center to the camera or be extremely risque in her movements that expose herself to the camera or, or a guy may be doing the exact same things to garner that attention or to keep your attention as you watch this video. Again, I, as I said earlier, I don't want to be someone who's entertaining you. I'm not an entertainer. I am a teacher. Um, but the throes of social network force me to consider how am I going to keep your attention to sit still long enough and let me teach you about why you are um, or why you should be doing cardio or why you should be more mindful in your food decisions or why you should be strength training. And then to be real with you, sometimes I do find myself questioning myself, <laughs> wondering, am I worthy or good enough to do or should I be doing what I'm doing? Because I don't have the constant feedback that those who were quote unquote thirst trap get. Um, I'm not someone who has a, a ton of likes on my post. I'm not someone who has tons of comments of adulation and praise. I'm someone who has a lot of saves. People save my content. People share my content, but I don't get to see or hear what everyone else hears. I'm not saying I have to hear, oh, Ron, you're hot, or Ron, you're beautiful, or Ron, you're strong. That's not something that does a whole lot for me. But receiving those likes, I am guilty of that. I am guilty of wanting to see a bunch of likes wanting to see a bunch of shares, but that does not mean you have a quality audience. It just means that you are entertaining someone to the point whereby they're going to say, Hey, I like this and physically hit the like button or, or heart button to show that. But remember to keep my eyes on, I hate to, to say that quote, but eyes on the prize is, Oh, I must be mindful of why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm here to help this lady lower her a one C and no, she's not going to, be um, all too thrilled to like the information I just gave her, but it definitely was a game changer. The information that I get that I did give her. Um, I'm not going to to get a bunch of likes because I explained to you why eating turkey in excess can cause gout. That's not something that's going to get a lot of praise, as opposed to this guy with the the big pump and his shirt off, or this girl with her with her boobs um, darn near falling out, or. This lady doing some box squats with the camera center mass to her crotch. Um, those will get a lot of likes and attention, but they won't um, create the depth of audience that I'm trying to create. There's a much larger purpose of what I'm trying to do here. So anyways, I'm not someone to speak about my personal woes, but I figured this is a great time to give more, more depth to who I am. Um, try, and, try and give some more transparency, as everyone says now more transparency to who I am. I've spent my whole life creating what I call a false transparency. Transparency, in fact, which means I'm showing you who I am, but seriously limiting to what degree you can see who I actually am. A very curated version of Ron Jones being a business and everything. Because Big Ron Jones is the actual brand. He is the actual business. Anyways, that is Big Ron Jones. Um, the first of many of these videos to come. I'm going to keep this coming. Um, this might not get a whole lot, but I hope something that I said is going to motivate you to feel like you should um, stick to whatever you're, you're thinking about sticking to or commit to whatever you feel like you should be committing to or just simply be perhaps entertained by my story of who I am. Anyways, I'm glad you listened in. I am Big Ron Jones, the guy with practical advice for your real world goals.